Hey everybody, welcome back and welcome back to something that's a little different than normal. Today I'm going to be making a witch's cauldron. If anybody knows me, you know that I am very cheap and I don't like to purchase much. Uh, hopefully by the time this witch's cauldron is done, minus the Monster Guts wiper motor that I'm going to put in it, uh, maybe five bucks. That's what I'm hoping for. So um, I got the witch's cottage done and I wanted to get some of the accessories that are going to be inside done so that way when time comes to get set up, I'm not rushing around last minute to... Um, to get things done and this is actually a pretty big project because it's going to be the cauldron and it's going to be a whole witch armature and I have a wiper motor to go in it maybe a deer motor depending but more likely a wiper motor so I'm just going to walk you through the steps that I went through here and the uh, first thing I did was I just went to the Dollar Tree I got a couple pool noodles which I only needed one and a little bit of another one uh, I got a bag of zip ties I got a roll of brown paper the thin brown paper that you can get and I also got uh, obviously a laundry basket there and I went around the neighborhood and I got a bunch of uh, newspapers off of empty properties so that was free and um, so the first thing I wanted to do is I gotta build this thing up and I have no clue what I'm doing just so you know I haven't messed with paper mache a little bit here and there but nothing crazy at all so what I'm doing here is I'm just putting the brim on the top and then after I put the brim on the top I'm going to try and simulate something on the sides that will bulk up the actual cauldron to make it look like uh, an actual kettle uh, so it's a little round on the sides. So we'll finish up this top here and then I'm going to show you where these cutouts are at. A lot of the stuff I already have pre-done but I want to do a little bit on camera so you can see me actually doing it. <clears throat> but zip ties, they're awesome they were just the right length I didn't have to use two but I got one in there that did the job to keep that nice and secure I did wrap the uh, the, the portion of the basket with some brown paper um, I had put some glue on there the water the glue water mixture um, I put it on there when I put it onto the basket basically because I want something for these parts right here to adhere to so here I am here I'm just putting these winglets on I guess you would call them I think there was uh, seven total so I started hot gluing as you can see on the first one I was using some hot glue hot glue gun was working well but it just wasn't very stable as you can see the more I'm spending way too much time on this for just one one little piece eventually I get a little smart and I figure stuff out I go away from the actual glue gun and uh, I'm going to start a different, much easier technique. I just taped them on. Uh, and then once I taped them on, I hot glued a couple spots, but uh, you'll see that in a second. You can see this is fast forwarded three times the speed and I'm totally struggling with this, with this glue gun. But now I started taping them on. I know it probably seems a little bulky right there, uh, but after I get the paper mache on there, it's not it's not utterly too bad. It's a it's pretty well shaped at the end, which you'll see. But my original plan was I was just gonna put these on here, and then I was gonna just maybe line some masking tape around it. And uh, the more I thought about it, the more I knew that I had to get some bulk on there. So when I get these louvers on. Um, I really had to take a time out to figure out where I was going to go. You know, like I said, I'm very cheap. I didn't want to spend too much money. Uh, I, I'm not going to go out and buy a cauldron this size for 40, 50 bucks. So what I did was uh, I took some time off. I came back and thought about it and I went and used that newspapers and I used the newspaper to fill in the gaps right here in the center and uh, they filled it pretty well and I could kind of shape some stuff here and there. So it really didn't take that much paper. I thought it would take a lot more, but it really, honestly, wasn't that bad. Just getting them in there, kind of smashing them down or getting to where I needed to be. 
You can see I'm just kind of taping the shape first. Once I tape the shape, then I'm going to put it inside. And, uh, and then when I get to that point, I'm actually just going to tape it in there. And some of them weren't really wide enough. And I had to go through and make a little section on to, off to the side. And uh, that was just to make sure I got the total fill in there. Because when this thing gets a couple layers of paper mache on the outside, uh, it's going to have to hold its shape. And the only thing I'm going to have is this newspaper here to help hold its shape behind it. So I'm really glad I took the break that I did. And that this break allotted me some time to think about how I was going to proceed. As you can see here, I I kind of got goofy here for a minute. I started using cardboard cutouts that I'd had just to bulk up the uh, the middle. So there I am there. I'm trying to piece them together and uh, figure some stuff out. So I put them in there. It kind of gave me a little bit less depth that I would have to do with the newspaper. Uh, and I had the cardboard. I have cardboard everywhere. So I figured it wouldn't hurt much. And um, in, in the end, it didn't hurt anything at all. So you could do it the paper, the newspaper way all the way, or you could do that to help you out to save on some newspaper, depending on, I guess, your supply list and what all you have. But it looks like I have about two more left here. I think this is the next to last one. I was very cautious to put tape on the very top next to the next to the pool noodle uh, because when I start paper mache and I didn't want anything to have to go down in there I want a pretty smooth transition and that tape will do pretty well uh, the problem is sometimes tape doesn't want to stick to any kind of paper mache that you do so um, as you'll see here in a little bit I don't have too much uh, footage of me actually paper mache but when I did uh, it worked out pretty well so um, the, the tape the smooth side of the clear tape actually worked out pretty well with the mache. At least it has so far because it's still drying. But I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to be all right. So and here we are on the last louver, and as you can see with that build up of the cardboard in there, I can kind of get it as kind of wide, and then I can kind of press it out to make it a little wider because I don't have to go so deep. So deep. And so I'm doing right here, pressing on it, get it in there. And uh, the last one was kind of wide because, you know, it's really no rhyme or rhythm of what I'm doing right here. I'm just trying to make something a little cheap to be able to go with what I need. Uh, one thing I'm probably going to do, I don't know if it will be in the video or not, but one thing I am going to do is I'm going to add a block of wood at the bottom just to give it some stability. And uh, after I do that, then I'll paint it. And that will be in the part two of the series. And right here, I want it to be more round. So I just basically took it, taped each end down give it some a little bit more roundness i guess you could call it i think i ran out of tape right there i was getting a new new thing of tape but maybe it might look like a pumpkin to some of you might think it looks like a pumpkin <laughs> i don't know um but here we are now i had, uh, started the mache so my mache mix is pretty simple i went to the dollar tree you get the the two two glues for you know a buck and uh i used four four tubes of glue total to that to that barrel right there so it's probably not quite 50 50 it's probably more like 60 40 um, but it dried out pretty well it's 101 degrees today in florida and uh so it didn't take much for it to dry out i had it outside for about two hours and it was stiff as a board and that was just the first layer so uh on this video i'm only showing the first layer um, the second layer is already put on and it's drying right now, but I didn't want to bore you to death with all of that. <clears throat> so I am using kind of bigger paper here. Uh, my strips are pretty big. I wanted to cover a big area in one shot. But in order to do that, I absolutely have to make sure that I'm crisscrossing my patterns and that I'm putting on more than probably two or three layers. Uh, I put on the third layer today. I'm going to look at it in the morning and see where it's at. And I might put a fourth before we go ahead and... Uh, and, and make the final preparations before we paint it. But as you can see, just taking the strips, making a huge, huge mess. I wish I would have thought this out a little better, but it was it was definitely messy. And another thing you're not going to be able to see on the video is uh, when I was done here, uh, I took it outside and I flipped it over, and I, I, I put a, probably two solid layers on the bottom. That way it's all intertwined and then when it does dry i don't have to worry about the bottom falling out or anything like that and like i said i'm going to attach a, a, a circular block to the bottom wooden block that i have that's already pre-cut out for it i'm going to put that on there and 
you know, it might not make a difference that there's anything on the bottom, but I wanted to put something down there just for a little bit of extra stability on the on the mache part itself. So this brings us to the part one closure. And I hope you like what you see so far. This is all rookie stuff right here. I have no idea what I'm doing, like I said before. So I hope you continue to stay tuned because I am just like everybody else that's watching this that is a pure amateur. I'm learning as I go. Every year I get a little better. I'm hoping this year I can grow my potential a lot, a lot more than I have in the past. And I, I think I can. I'm, uh, I'm eat, sleeping, and breathing this stuff. So uh, I hope you stay tuned for part two. Part two should be out tomorrow or the day after. And once we get done with that, we're going to get some other stuff done. I have so, a lot of stuff that I'm going to get unboxed. And uh, you just wait till you see some of the stuff that we have to unbox. And I have so many projects that I'm going to hit you guys up with and do videos. And hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys can give me some tips on how to do it better. And hopefully, um, maybe I could teach you something in the long run as well. So, hope everybody had a good Memorial Day weekend. I know we did. And um, not taking the weekend for granted, that's for sure. So, hope you stay tuned, like I said. And we'll see you guys in a couple of days. Bye.